Oh man, so many SSD drive questions. Like, how do I install an M.2 NVMe drive as a boot drive without having to reinstall all my software? Will it boot faster than a SATA-based SSD drive? How much performance can I really expect when I'm copying files? Can I put two of these in my PC at one time? How does the Samsung 970 EVO Plus compare to the Western Digital SN750? Let's find out. About a year ago, I did a video on how to install the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. Now that's an M.2 NVMe drive. And as it turns out, that, that has really been far and away my most viewed video in the last 12 months. Over that time frame, I've gotten a couple of questions that have come up. Like, for example, why did I not install it as a boot drive? And then another question I frequently get are, can I install two SSD drives on my motherboard? So I, put, I wanted to see what would happen if I did set it up as a boot drive and see what the difference is. Now, the reason I didn't really bother to do it before is because my current boot drive is a Samsung SATA SSD. So it is not as fast as an M.2. So surely the M.2 will boot faster. But frankly, the, the SATA SSD is not that bad. Uh, we'll do a benchmark boot on that and we'll see how long that takes. It's actually reasonably quick, but we'll compare that to the M.2 speed as a boot drive um, and we'll see how those two things really compare. I ordered from Amazon uh, this Western Digital, uh, Western Digital Black SN750. I'll put it up there so you can see it and I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in checking this out. This is also a one terabyte drive like my 970 EVO Plus. This is their high performance gaming SSD and it's a little bit less expensive than the Samsung. And by a little bit, I mean Samsung's probably somewhere around 180 bucks. I think I paid 140 plus tax for the uh, Western Digital. So, uh, I mean, that 40 bucks is a fair, fair amount less. And so what we're gonna do is get a comparison here. I'm gonna, I, once I get this installed, we're gonna do some sequential read and write benchmarking, just so you can see the difference between the more expensive Samsung 970 Evo Plus and this Western Digital S750. And then I'm going to set this up as my boot volume and I'm gonna compare the boot off of my SATA 860 Samsung and uh, compare the boot times to this SN750 Western Digital M.2. Uh, and then finally, what I'll do, we'll do just for my curiosity more than anything, we'll do a file copy, a large video file uh, in 4K, so it's multiple gigabytes. And we're gonna copy that from one M.2 to the other and maybe back the other way just to see what kind of uh, copy performance we get between these two drives, because that's a real world thing, uh, me moving files back and forth between drives, something I do re fairly regularly. So I'll take you along for the ride, and then we will look at the, the utility we're gonna use to clone my current Samsung uh, 860 boot drive to this SN750 Western Digital, so that I can then switch this over as the boot volume. And let's jump into the process and see what it takes to get all this done. All right, so let's install this thing. You can see here, this is the uh, Samsung with a heatsink on it, and I'll <laughs> put a link to that heatsink uh, video if you're interested in watching that. Bottom line is, I'm not sure that's really all that helpful or necessary. My other M.2 socket is actually under this little uh, heat shield here. And the reason I installed the Samsung over here is really only because I didn't want to have to bother uh, removing the video card. This time, uh, there's really no getting around that. Oh, so first thing is, I want to make sure before I do anything in here, I can actually see a little red light down on my motherboard. I'm not sure you can make that out on the video, but uh, that reminds me that my, um, my uh, PC is actually plugged in. So let's unplug that before we do anything else. Unplug my video card. All right, so it looks like I've got three screws. I've got a, uh, a standoff already in this particular position, right? And if you don't have standoffs uh, and uh, mounting screws, these little guys right here, 
Uh, I, uh, I've got a link in the description below if you wanna buy these. They're like five bucks or something on Amazon. Uh, but since the SD drives, SSD drives don't come with these, um, and if your motherboard doesn't happen to provide you some, um, you can go ahead and pick those up real cheap off Amazon like I did. So um, there is a little heat transfer strip on the bottom of this aluminum piece. So I had to peel a little plastic thing off of that so that will contact the uh, SSD drive. But this will allow a heat transfer between the SSD into this little uh, aluminum heat sink uh, plate that goes over at the top. So the installation obviously, very simple. Put that in there, push it down, right? And we already have the standoff in place. That was a mistake I actually made on my original install, which I've since corrected. And several people have pointed that out to me. Just firm that down a little bit. Now this is gonna stick to the top of the SSD, so we wanna make sure we get our screw holes lined up before we put it down. I'm gonna push that down a little bit there just to make sure I get a nice good contact. All right, now we got all the components back in. Before I put the cover back on and actually button everything back down, we'll go ahead and put the power back in and reattach the video. And we'll make sure that we can boot in and format that hard drive. All right, so we're all booted up. We've got the M.2 drive installed, and now we need to make Windows aware of it. So we're gonna go down in the search field here and we are going to uh, type in disk manage, create and format hard disk partitions. This is what we'll pick here from the search menu. So it opens up the disk management and immediately it comes up and says, we have a new disk four here and you must initialize this uh, before the logical disk manager can access it. So instead of using the uh, master boot record, which is the sort of the old traditional way of doing it, we're gonna use GPT, which is fairly new and has some advantages. Now there's not a huge difference between the two. If you need backward compatibility, you probably should choose MBR. If you don't, going forward, and most people probably do not, probably a good idea to go ahead and pick the newer partition style for this particular drive. So I'm gonna choose GPT, and now it should show up in my list here. You can see I have got, if I scroll down here, a disk four. Let's go ahead and make this drive available. So I'm not sure that it's entirely necessary that we do this. I think that it is um, in order to install the Western Digital cloning utility. I think it has to be installed on a Western Digital drive. So I'm gonna say new simple volume. And we'll take the full amount and we'll assign a drive letter. Let's call this uh, S for system. And we'll go with that and maybe we'll just call it system. And we'll use NTFS, and we'll just go ahead and do a quick format. You can see under here we have a couple of options. XFAT, really for like external storage. Um, I don't think we wanna use that in this case, so NTFS makes more sense, especially for a system volume. Uh, probably should be NTFS. But uh, we'll go ahead and say next. And boom, there we go. So there's our system drive. So we could perform uh, some basic uh, speed tests on it right now. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So I used Crystal Disk Mark. So let's do the Samsung first real quick. So we'll pick the V drive. All right, so there you go. We got 3.4 gigabytes uh, read and 3. Point, we'll call it 3.3 write. That's not too bad. Um, so we'll go ahead and switch that to the S drive, which is the new Western Digital, and we'll rerun the test. And 3.1 on the right. So we're call it 200 megabytes slower per second approximately on the right. So they're pretty close in performance. And given the price differential, I don't think that the very slightly less performance on the read write test is anything unreasonable given the fact that they are $40 apart in price at least. Now we need to go get the clone software. So we are going to go on the Western Digital site. Uh, there is the support and downloads page, and there is this Acronis True Image software. Now if we open that up, you'll see in the description here, it can clone drives. We are going to download that. All right, let's go ahead and unzip that guy. I'm going to extract that. 
All right, so now we're unzipped, so to speak, uh, and we can go ahead and install this install. Looks like it's going to install wherever the heck it wants to install. <laughs> okay, that's kind of interesting. I have not done this before with this application, so we'll see how well this works. We'll start the application. We'll read all of this real quick. There, done. I got it memorized. All right, let's pick clone disk and see where we get. All right, we will choose, let's see, all your partitions from the source hard disk will be copied to the target hard disk in a few simple steps. All right, so I want to exactly clone my C drive. So I want it to do all of my partitions, including my recovery partitions and, uh, and all that. So I want it to, to, to take everything. So automatic is really the thing that I want to do here. So um, I'm going to take that and click next. And we will pick the source disk, so the, the disk we want to clone, which is going to be my Samsung 860 Evo. All right, so that is my source disk. I will select that and click next. All right now I'm going to pick the target disk, which is going to be the Western Digital one terabyte NVMe drive and click next. Uh, now it does tell me that my destination hard disk has, has some partitions that could contain useful data. Uh, so I'm going to sacrifice those. Obviously, I don't want to retain those. I'm going to let the cloning software do what it needs to do. I'm going to click OK here. Okay, so it does look like we have to restart the computer. So I am going to have to stop the capture and restart, and I will resume the capture as soon as I am able to. All right, so yeah, once I started the clone process, it told me I needed to reboot. Uh, it boots into this uh, shell, and it is doing the cloning process. It told me it was going to take about 16 minutes, uh, but it's just chugging along, and I'll report back and tell you how long it actually did take once it's finished. All right, we're going to do a basic boot test here. Let's make sure we know which drive we are currently set to boot from. So I'll go into disk management here, and you can see, you can see disk zero, which is my Samsung drive, my 860 SSD SATA, is currently set as my boot drive. Down here, disk four is a clone. This is my Western Digital M.2 drive. So we are booting, as you can see by the little uh, cross hashes here, off of the Samsung drive. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and shut this thing down. All right, here we go. Now this is booting off the 860 SATA SSD drive. And we're going to see if we got any performance advantage. Now, booting to the login screen is going to be the same probably no matter what drive you're using because of the power on self-test and all the other stuff. It's not being read off the disk. So around 24 seconds, we get the login prompt. Now we're going to record this or time this until I get to my Razer login. I got a couple of Razer windows that'll load up in memory. We're just going to see how long that takes. So you'll see the first one pop up and then go away. There's the first one. Then my Snagit will load. It's my screen capture utility. And then there's Snagit. Now the next one will be my login and I'll stop the counter here. All right. So 54.4 seconds. Let's call it 54 and a half seconds. Uh, off of the Samsung 860 SSD drive running on the SATA channel. All right, so now we are going to reset that. This is currently pointed to my one terabyte drive. So interestingly, this thing wants to boot to my Western Digital now that I'm in the, um, the boot menu. So inside the boot menu, you see this one falls at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that again. It will automatically boot back into Windows. And then we're gonna double check that it is now set to disk four. Uh, before we do our time test. Back into our disk manager. All right, so we can see here that we now have the cross hashes on disk four, which is the Western Digital. All right, so let's go ahead and power this thing down. So we're completely fair. All right, booting off the M.2 drive. Fifty-two point six five seconds. So not a big difference. Kind of surprising. I really hoped it was going to be more of a difference than that. But uh, I think the more sort of startup utilities you have loaded, 
the better you're going to notice things like uh, startup time on the M.2. I think the main comparison is that if you were to compare this to a traditional spinning hard drive, you would literally see the difference to be like three to four minutes startup time versus 52 seconds to the same point here. Uh, but I think we all know how painful it is to cold boot off of a spinning hard drive. It's kind of surprising. I actually expected to get a little bit more of a performance benefit, but as you saw, there was virtually no difference, so maybe a second or two. It was a very, very uh, small margin that the uh, M.2 was faster. I hope you saw how easy it was to install the M.2 again as a boot drive. It's easy to, to do the clone. Um, hopefully you get something out of that. Uh, I, I found it pretty interesting. I think the big takeaway really should be, if you're currently running a spinning hard drive, you know, the 5400 RPM or even a 7200 RPM drive uh, as your boot volume, you will get dramatically improved boot time, no matter how you measure it, from the SSD. That should be pretty much a no-brainer. And I would recommend, because the costs really aren't that dramatic, uh, getting a M.2 drive if your motherboard supports it. If you are currently running something like the 860 EVO as a SATA-based SSD like I was before, I think we can draw the conclusion that there's no huge benefit based on just boot times to upgrading that to an M.2. So if that happens to be the case uh, that, that you find yourself in, maybe save yourself the money. I'm also not sure that it was really uh, advantageous to spend the extra money for the Samsung 970 EVO Plus uh, versus the Western Digital, which is, as I said, about 40 bucks cheaper. I'll put links to all these in the description below if you wanna go kind of look at the specs and check them out. So hopefully you found something useful in there. Uh, if you did, please consider giving us a thumbs up. We'd appreciate that, it does help the channel. Consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. We'd love to have you around. And uh, thanks for joining us for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.